Welcome to Honest News. I'm a new creation. I'm a brand new man. Thank you for your support, Honest News Network. I've been born Before we get into the message, I would just like to encourage God's people that we're not to be worrying about this virus. In Psalm 91, the scripture says, No plague shall come nigh thy dwelling. And that is what you and I should be putting our trust in. Amen? We should be putting our trust in the Word of God. Amen. We should believe God, not believe what man is saying today. Even if it is a virus that is even killing people, we are not to be afraid. There is no fear in love. Amen. Perfect love casteth out fear, and no plague shall come nigh thy dwelling. That's the Word of God. If you like to follow in the reading of God's Word, Hebrews chapter 11, beginning with verse 4. Hebrews chapter 11, beginning with verse 4. By faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain by which he obtained witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts, and by it he being dead yet speaketh. Let's read this beginning of this verse again. By faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you, God, for giving to us faith. We know that without faith it is impossible to please you. We know, Lord, that without faith we can't have a relationship with you. Without faith, Lord, that we cannot please you. We pray, Lord, that you will bless this message, anoint this message as we minister your word. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. So we see in the scripture that it was faith that separated Abel from Cain. It was faith that separated Abel from Cain. This is how Abel was different than Cain. Cain did not have faith in God. Amen? Jude, chapter 1, verse 11. Woe unto them, for they have gone in the way of Cain and ran greedily after the era of Balaam for reward, and perished in the gainsaying of Kor. We understand in the book of Jude, those that do not walk by faith, those who do not live by faith, we understand that they are going in the way of Cain. What does that mean? 1 John, chapter 3, verse 11. For this is the message 
that you have heard from the beginning, that we should love one another, that we should love one another. Not as Cain, who was of that wicked one and slew his brother, and wherefore slew he him? Because his own works were evil, and his brother's righteous. Are you listening? All those today that are not walking by faith, the scripture says that they are going in the way of Cain. They're not walking in faith and they're not walking in love. How can you expect those that are going in the way of Cain to love. They're not going to. And let me just tell you, this can happen right in God's house too. Amen? Remember that Cain and Abel both came from the same womb. They came from the same seed. Amen? And Abel loved God. He was a righteous man. His works were righteous. Why is it that Abel was righteous and walked by faith and Cain did not walk by faith and his works were evil? What what caused that? Why was Cain not like his brother? And I believe with all my heart it's because Every man is given choice. We all have a will. Every one of us. Amen. Cain, he could have walked by faith. Amen. And if he didn't know God, the way Abel knew God, you would think that he'd want to know. You'd think that he would want what his brother had. But instead, he chose to be against his brother. Are you listening? It comes down to choice, folks. I believe the same opportunity the same privilege that was offered to Abel was offered to Cain. How many know there are those today that avail themselves and there are those that don't? There are those that are lukewarm right in the house of God and then there are those that are on fire for the Lord. It's not because one is being favored over the other in the sense that one has more of an opportunity than than the other, it's because there's a choice to be made. Don't ever point your finger at God or anybody, say, or even anybody else for that matter. Don't point your finger saying, I'm thus because of you. No. You have the right to choose. God has given every one of us that ability. I may know that. We're born with a will. Amen. That's really the only difference. Some choose to serve God when he calls, and some don't. I may know there had to be a time in Abel's life, when he answered the call, when he heard God speaking, amen, and he chose to obey God. Whereas Cain, 
he chose to disobey God. We know that Cain heard God's voice. God himself came to Cain and he said, why has your countenance fallen? He talked to Cain. But see, the difference is, is that Cain rejected God's voice. He rejected the word of God. And that's what sets people apart today. Those that are serving God and worshiping God and obeying God. And then there are those that reject God. Reject his word. That's the only difference between Cain and Abel. Abel received God's word. Cain despised God's word. Amen. An interesting point that my wife made this morning, I'm going to bring it out in the message today, is and I never really saw this myself, that Cain was the first human liar on the earth. Cain was the first one to lie. It's an interesting point. We know that Adam didn't lie. We know that Eve didn't lie. Amen? The first human recorded lying was Cain. When God came to Cain after he slew his brother, he said, where's your brother? And he said, am I my brother's keeper? I don't know where he is, but he did know. Amen. It's interesting how lying is coupled with murder. Hmm? You think it's not a serious thing to be a liar? You think it's not a serious thing to be dishonest? It's coupled with murder. Amen. What does the scripture say in the New Testament? If you hate your brother, that's murder. Amen. If you've got hate in your heart towards your brother in the Lord, that's murder in the eyes of God. Are you being honest? Is there something inside of you that you've allowed to fester against a brother or sister in the Lord? God forbid, but in in the household of faith that a brother or sister in the Lord that don't love one another, where you've allowed something to fester, a, a root of bitterness, That's that's one thing among the world, right? But when it happens in the household of faith, in the family of God, Cain and Abel were brothers. Usually, brothers protect one another. They say that blood is thicker. Amen? Blood is thicker than anything else, right? There's nothing thicker than the blood of two brothers. Think about that. But why is it that Cain did not protect his brother? He allowed hate to get into his heart. He began to despise his brother. Are you listening? And all his brother was doing is pleasing God. That's all he was doing. Amen. Jesus said, you're going to be persecuted for righteousness. All they that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. You didn't think that You are going to be hated, rejected, despised if you serve the Lord, that if you're pleasing God, you didn't think that you would be 
despised? Well, then you haven't read your Bible. Think it not strange, brothers and sisters, when you're hated. Even in the household of faith, there are those that are envied because they may be more on fire for the Lord or closer to the Lord. Amen? There are those in the body of Christ that are envied by those that have not availed themselves, those that are lukewarm. Amen? How many know that the majority of the church today is not on fire for the Lord? The majority of the church today is not hearing God's voice. They're not obeying God's voice. They may be hearers of his word, but they're not doers. Amen. As I was sharing with you in a previous message, there needs to be repentance. Amen. And before repentance is rebuke. And that's exactly what we see the Lord saying in the book of Revelation. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. That's where we are right now. The difference is, is that the bride of Christ is receiving rebuke, receiving the word of God to be corrected. Whereas the majority of the church today, they're rejecting God's rebuke. They're rejecting God's correction. And they say, I'm rich, increased with goods, and have need of nothing. They will not receive the word of God. They will not be rebuked. And they will not be chastened. And because they will not be rebuked, they will not be chastened, they will be cut off for a time, in a season. For three and a half years from the face of the serpent, God will protect them while they're cut off from the bride of Christ on the earth. They will be left behind. Are you listening? The majority of the church is not going to go to heaven with the bride. There's going to be a separation. Amen? We see in the book of Revelation that the church of Philadelphia, there was no rebuke from the Lord. There was no criticism. There was no correction to the church of Philadelphia. Philadelphia is the church of brotherly love. Amen? But what a difference between the church of Philadelphia and the church of Laodicea. Isn't that interesting? The Lord says, if you're lukewarm, I will spew you out of my mouth. The majority of the church today is going to be spewed out into the first three and a half years of the tribulation hour. That's what we read about in the book of Revelation. They're going to flee into the wilderness where they have a place prepared of God that is allegorical, that's not literal. They're going to be fed for three and a half years until they come to full maturity where they will be caught up in the middle of the air what is traditionally called the rapture. But the church as a whole is nodding off to go to sleep, the wise virgins. Amen? The bride of Christ is not among the wise virgins. Are you listening? The wise virgins will, re uh, excuse me, the bride of Christ will return with Christ in the middle of the air when the church is caught up. The bride will already be with the Lord and will return with the Lord in the middle of the air. How do we know that? Because in the book of Luke, in chapter 12, the scripture says, look it up for yourself, it says when the Lord will return from the wedding. We know the wedding wedding is already taken place because he's coming from the wedding. Amen. And in that same context, he says, let your lights be burning. You 
unto you that are like men that wait for the Lord when he shall return from the wedding. And that's where the wise virgins are. Their lights were burning. They fell asleep. Their lamps went out. Be listening, people. And I'm telling you, that's the majority of the church today in that condition, that lukewarm, nodding off to go to sleep. But how many know There are some overcomers. There are. There are some, a few, not many, but there are a few. Out of the many called, there are a few chosen to be his bride that are overcoming. Praise the living God, and they're making themselves ready. Oh, praise the Lord. You hear what I just said? They're making themselves ready. You're not going to make yourself ready if you're nodding off to go to sleep. You're not going to make yourself ready if you're lukewarm. Amen. Praise the Lord, people. So, those that are going in the way of Cain today are not walking in love. Let me ask you a question. Do you have something festering in your heart towards a brother or sister, towards somebody? Do you have something there that you're not willing to deal with? You know, God tried to deal with Cain. He tried to help him. Why has your countenance fallen? Why are you sad, Cain? He was trying to help him. Amen. Just as the Lord Jesus is trying to help you and I today, as many as I love, I counsel. Amen. I rebuke and chasten. Praise the Lord. If there's anything in you and I that is not of faith, the Scripture says it is sin. Sin is at the door, people. Amen. It seems that Cain began to listen to another voice. That voice inspired him to kill his brother, to murder his brother. Amen. If we reject God's voice, people, If we reject God's chastening, we reject God's rebuke, we will listen to that other voice. Amen. Well, you have a right. You have a right to be upset with so-and-so. Look what they did to you. You're justified in that. You have a right. You're justified in being angry. Amen. Listen, people. There's only two, only two types of people on the earth. Amen. There's those that love God and those that don't love God. Those that obey God's voice and those that don't obey God's voice. It's that simple. You're either like an Abel or you're like a Cain. It's that simple. What it comes down to. Amen? And there's even something better than that. To be like Enoch. Amen? Enoch walked with God. He was not for God took him. He had this testimony that he pleased God. But then there's even something better than that. And that's to be like Jesus. He loved his enemies. Amen. While we were yet enemies, Christ died for us. Amen. Praise the Lord. And Jesus said to you and I, love your enemies. Amen. We are to walk in love, people. 
Not our own love, not human love, but God's love. Love, God's love, never faileth. Never fails. Amen? If you find yourself failing, you're not walking in his love. His love never faileth. We know there's a counterfeit love in the land today. Amen? And those that have that counterfeit love are of their father, the devil. And he was a murderer from the beginning. There's only one true, genuine love, and that's God's love. Amen? Not talking about phileo love. Not talking about human love. Talking about agape love. God's love. Praise the Lord. Glory to the Lamb, people. <clears throat> Glory to the Lamb. God is faithful. Praise the Lord. We need more of the love of God to be rooted and grounded in Christ and be filled with all the fullness to be rooted and grounded in the love of Christ. Praise the Lord. We've got to walk in love. We've got to be filled with love. There is no fear in love. Perfect love casteth out fear. And you won't be seeking to kill anyone. On the contrary, you'll be seeking to protect. That's what love does. Amen. Love protects. Praise the Lord. Glory to the Lamb, people. Glory to the Lamb. Hallelujah. See, love says, I am my brother's keeper. Amen. That's what love says. I am my brother's keeper. Blessed be the name of the Lord, people. Brotherly love. Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord. In the coming days, we're going to be dealing with that. We're going to be dealing with brotherly love. Amen. We need to be walking in love, in God's love, if we're going to overcome. Amen. If we're going to be in that bride company, We've got to walk in love. Amen. Love worketh no ill to his neighbor. Love is not proud, puffed up, vaunting itself. Amen. Love does not seek its own. It's not easily provoked. Amen. Love is kind, gentle, patient, long-suffering. Amen. Praise the Lord. We need to be cultivating, preparing our hearts to receive God's love. Amen. You're going to be listening to this broadcast. That's what you're going to be hearing. Preparing our hearts to receive his heart, to be like Jesus, to have God's love in our heart. Amen. Faith worketh by love. Love worketh by faith. They work together. You can't have one without the other. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Scripture says, how can you love God who you can't see if you can't love your brother who you can see? Amen. Don't say you love God if you can't love your brothers and sisters. Amen. It's one thing, and you shouldn't even have unforgiveness or bitterness towards the world. Amen. And when I say unforgiveness, I'm talking about somebody you have something in your heart towards that has asked you to forgive them or has repented 
and you keep holding on to that. Maybe in the workplace or something. Somebody's offended you. You and I are to be easy to be entreated, brothers and sisters. If somebody has offended us, we should be quick to forgive them if they are seeking to be forgiven, if they're seeking repentance. Amen? Praise the Lord. We never have a right to have the final judgment on anybody. I mean, know that. God is the only judge. There is no other judge. We have to commit all judgment to the Lord. Amen? And he will vindicate us. Amen? His vengeance will go out against our enemies. But we're not to take that into our own hands. That doesn't mean that they're not going to be met by the vengeance of God. What it means is it's not you and I. It's not our place. Amen. Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. I will repay. He's the judge. Amen. And the more you grow in the Lord, the more you turn it over to God, the happier you will be. Amen. You won't have anything festering. You won't have any bitterness, nothing festering on the inside. You'll be peaceable, easy to be entreated. Amen. Praise the living God. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. We need to learn about God's love. We need to know his love. Amen. His love is not like our love. It's not human. Amen. Your human love cannot ever perfectly love your enemy. It's not possible. Your human love could never love God perfectly. Amen. They that are in the flesh cannot please God. You can never please God in the flesh. Amen. Our human love must be replaced by God's divine love, by agape love. Praise the Lord. The world does not know anything about that love. That love that is pure. It's unadulterated. Amen. That love that is clean and pure and holy. Praise the Lord. The world doesn't know anything about that love. But you and I, we should be becoming very acquainted with. We must know the love of God, brothers and sisters. To know the height, the depth, the breadth, the length. To know the love of Christ. To be filled with all the fullness. Praise the Lord. To walk with God as Enoch walked with God. To love even our enemies. Amen. We need to be developing. We need to be growing up. We need to be maturing. Amen. In the love of God. Blessed be his name. God bless you. We've got the power in the name of Jesus, we've got... Thank you for your support of Honest News Network. In the name of the Lord, though Satan rages, we cannot be defeated.